welcome to a very, very special episode of Thinking Tackle. It's Romania, it's the 2012 World Car Fishing Championships, and I'm Adam Penning. And I'm Dean Macy, and over the next three days, 20 top countries will be battling it out to see if they can become the World Car Fishing Champions. It promises to be a fantastic event, doesn't it, Adam? You know, we've got the big nations, we've got the small nations, we've got the four-time world champions, South Africa, are here, and we've also got some minnows as well, Moldova, Latvia, places like that, can they cause a huge upset? Well, the venue seems fantastic, it's well over a thousand acres, it's stocked to the brim, tactics seem to be very important, so does bait, but we've got a fantastic team, England, coming here. Anything could happen really, couldn't it, Adam? Absolutely, Dino. Our team are very, very well prepared for this event and uh, I think in, in actual terms of individuals and a team cohesion, everything looked perfectly in place. It's going to be fantastic to see how they're going to perform on this stage. One thing I would point out, as you can see out the side of the helicopter, this lake is enormous and it's going to be interesting to see how fair it is. Really, can the fish be spread that far that every peg has fish in front of them? Well, we certainly hope so, Adam. One thing is for sure, over these next three days, the excitement is going to be unbearable. arrived today the atmosphere is absolutely booming it's absolutely buzzing here guys the show that these people have put on is off the scale there's dancing there's food there's fans there's girls it's something else you wouldn't believe they're competitors they're picking up each other they're having photographs they're throwing each other around it's such a friendly atmosphere isn't it yeah you've got teams big nations shoulder to shoulder in there and they're all having a jar of beer and eating together but it's going to get serious isn't it so what are we doing out here they're well, having a jar they're having a let's go it's a party come on I've just managed to grab Kev Hewitt out of the party and Kev, it's absolutely rocking in there, isn't it? It is, it's an unbelievable occasion. What a fantastic way. We've, we've just arrived today to this party and it's brilliant. It doesn't seem like the competitors are taking it seriously quite yet though. No, not at the moment. It's just, tonight's just all about enjoying the occasion and soaking up the atmosphere and getting to speak to a few people. You seem very relaxed. Obviously you've got the draw tomorrow. Does that make you nervous? Uh, I always get nervous at the draw. I think that's one of the biggest parts of the event. And um, yeah, that's definitely going to be one that's going to get my nerves going. Well, look, mate, I'll shake your hand. I wish you good luck. I think Team England's got a very, very good chance. I think, yeah, thank good you. Man. Whole house, great pleasure to welcome the England coach onto the programme. Mate, this is absolutely incredible. The pomp and circumstance of the occasion must be a bit overwhelming. Yeah, like I say, Adam, I've done a few of these in the past, but this, this is beginning to surpass all. Well, as you can tell, everyone's really getting in the mood. Uh, everyone seems to be getting on really well. Very, very friendly atmosphere. But uh, tomorrow will be the day. And it's interesting. It's a friendly atmosphere and there's a sense of a party occasion. But at the same time, you know, the England team were in bed early last night. There oh, wasn't yeah. any drinking. You no. know, you're, no. you're ruling them with a rod and not rod of iron. But they're, they're, it was such a sense of pride that they probably would have done it on their own, wouldn't they? Oh yeah. They're we've self motivated. Got, yes. And... yes, we've got a real unison at the moment in the team. Everyone's getting on really well. And as you can see, everybody's together all the time. Uh, nobody's doing their own thing. Real and sense of cohesion. Yes, and it's just a real team, and this is what we want. So when you're coming through the town, through the city, on an open top bus, all the young team behind you wearing 1966 World Cup red, it must give you an enormous amount of pride. Oh, it does, yeah. And also, I'm very proud of them, and they've come a long way. It's been about a lot of effort's gone into it, and everybody's put a lot of effort into it. Even the people who's participated, and 
through the elimination yes, trials yes. and so on. Unfortunately, been unfortunate. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is what they can aspire to. Absolutely. This is sort of like the end result. And I'm hoping it's just going to get better. Well, let's hope we're on an open top bus coming through with the gold medals on Sunday. Good luck. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much. Well, the fun and games of this morning is over, but the last preparations, serious preparations, are just about to begin. Now, we've been walking up and down this corridor for the last five minutes to try and find out where Team England is, and by the smell of this room, I reckon it's in here, and kindly, the boys have let us in for a sneaky peek what goes on behind the scenes, so let's go in and have a look. Hey, up, chaps. This room, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, smells very fishy. <laughs> Well, I'm all cosy with Team England, and um, the final preparations, I've got to say, are very, very impressive, but you must have done so much before you got out to Romania. Yeah, uh, to be honest, we've spent hours and hours and hours tying up rigs, spooling up reels, sorting out rods, just everything that we need, so there's going to be, you know, a faultless performance. Really. Give us an idea of how many, uh, like, rods in particular, how many rods you bring out per, because you're only allowed to use two in the championship, yeah, but how many spares each. you bring out? We bought eight rods each. Really? And they're all ready? They'll all be clipped up when, when need be and everything ready to go? Oh, the whole match, they'll be ready to go. So as soon as we land a fish, we can ditch the fish off to where it's got to go and then just pick the next rod up, fire it out, and you're fishing again within 30 seconds. It is impressive. You mentioned rigs as well. I've got to say, <laughs> I saw these rig safes earlier on, and I thought these were impressive. And that was very impressive as well, until I saw this one, which if I'm honest, if I own this, boys, I would put that on my shelf and I wouldn't even dare touch that. Uh, how, how many of these do you reckon you've got, Jake? I mean, there's um, the rigs that are tied up here is numerous. Yeah, we've got at least probably around 200 each. Really? But obviously you want more just in case because you don't want to spend any time, you know, tying any rigs up, bags, anything like that. So. Yeah. And you said about the amount of bags that you was tying up. You've got half a bucket full with 300 bags already. Yeah. You don't want to be touching the PVA while you're fishing. How long is that going to take? I mean, you've been in here probably an hour already and tied up a significant amount. Yeah, a couple more hours and then we'll be, we'll be all sorted really? down to the bar. We'll leave you to it. I know you've got a couple more hours of this to do, but I'm very, very impressed and I think we've got a great chance. Well, the fun and games are truly over, and today's what it's been all about. Adam, later on this afternoon, the 14th World Carp Fishing Championships begins, and just from a spectator's point of view, the atmosphere feels very intense already, doesn't it? It's, it's a huge event, and you can really feel there's a different flavour today. The intensity yeah. has reached bursting point, hasn't it? it you has. know, all the teams are, are, are mentally jostling for position. Everyone wants the best out of the draw. Where are people going to end up? Because that, that largely is the factor that decides any match like you know of this nature. So. You know, we've got three key sections, or three sections overall, A, B and C, and we know that we've got pairs in each one. So we've got the Bartlett and Hewitt we've got in A, we've got Kia uh, Sanger and Jack Stamp in B, and we've got the Wild Boar Brother pairing in C. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're going to find out now at the draw where they're going to get, and those end pegs, the six overall, they're going to be the ones that are going to control and, and hopefully get the best haul of fish. So whether or not we're going to get those, that's what it's all about. And that's why it's so intense now. We don't know where we're going to be within those sections. Well, so. next up is the peg draw. It's over there. Let's go and see how we do. We've just had the all-important draw, and guys, we knew what section the anglers were going to be in last night. But today, we got the pegs, and your reaction says it all. Oh, we're delighted. We're delighted with the peg choice. Um, we've got an end peg in, in A section, or we've got Mark and Kev, so we're really, really confident in that section. Yeah. And we've just had a good draw, which is nice for England, and about time. Came out number one. Yeah, is so that, is that a good out, omen? Yeah, it's brilliant, that, yeah. That was really good, that. Any, any thoughts on the other teams? No. No, all we're going to do is just focus on what we got to do 
we're not really bothered about anybody else. Superb. Well, I know the next couple of hours you've got to set up and get everything ready and get the guys round to their pegs so we won't stay in your way. Guys, good luck. I know the atmosphere is really, really thick this morning, so uh, I'll let you go. OK, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Steve. down here at the end of section A in peg A1. Mark Bartley, if I'll just grab a couple of seconds of your time. I mean, it's all happening now. I know you've got a certain amount of time just to get the gear sorted. It's all come off the lorry, but in these events, a lot of it's about the draw. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, we're sort of pretty pleased with the draw. Yeah. We've just got to do the damage now. We've got an M peg. You sort of, you pray for a good draw like that. Um, there's a lot of fish showing, and I think that this is maybe the better end of the section as well. So, uh, yeah, like I said, we just got to get some bait out there and uh, crunch some carp. So you feel this is the sort of swim that you can be unleashed in into your full potential? This is where it could happen for oh, you, isn't yeah, it? This, this is, is what uh, you wanted. Yeah, it's definitely me and Kevin will, you know, we'll sort of put a show on if we can and uh, Excellent. Okay. catch a few carp and do the damage. All right, mate, I know you've got a lot to do, so I'm gonna let you crack on. I'm gonna grab a word with Kev. Good yeah. work. Cheers, mate. Kev Hewitt, if I could just grab a couple of seconds yeah, of time. I feel a bit of guilty doing so because you boys have obviously got a lot to do, a lot of preparation and so on, but you must be buzzing right now. Absolutely buzzing. We've waited a long time for this and it's finally here. We're in our swim. We've seen where we are. We're quite happy with it. Fish are showing? There's a few fish showing, but there's fish showing sort of everywhere, to be honest. So um, it's always encouraging to see a few in your own swim, which we've seen. So uh, Definitely. fingers crossed. OK, now what about tactically? I mean, I'm looking at this swim and I'm thinking, well, there's two anglers. Do you, how do you decide who's going to fish where? Is, is, is there any um, tactical decision to be made? Basically, initially, we've looked at the swim. We said we're on an M peg, so we're going to fish short down to the left, which is the empty peg to our left. OK. And we're going to fish long out in front to cut any fish off long coming across and cut all the anglers off to the other side of us. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, okay. so Bart's the bigger caster, so he's okay. going to be on the long chuck side of the swim on the right-hand side, and I'm going to be on the left-hand side on the shorter casting section of the swim. OK, fantastic. Excellent. I'm going to let you crack on, mate. You're yeah. busy. Good luck. Thank you very much. This is the sort of volume of kit you're going to need to fish in the World Carp Championships. And with the heat, this is going to play a big factor as well. We're in section B, peg seven, Kia Sanger, Jack Stamp. Guys, any background news on your peg? You fancy it? Yeah, um, looking at the past results of previous matches, um, the middle of the section has been a good place to be in this one. Yeah. It's not going to be the best section out of the three, but... but um, well, we're looking forward to it, we're going to catch some fish. Yeah, it's just about keeping the fish going into the net yeah. and just keep adding to the weight, isn't it? Yeah, keep putting bait in, keep putting fish in the net. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's a good section. Do you fancy your chances? I mean, you've got, what, 20 minutes before you're allowed to get your kit into the swim. What do you do now? Because you actually, I've got to be honest with you, you look very, very calm. Yeah, well, see, we can't really do a lot. We started to get our gear together, then we were told we couldn't. So we just got to wait now, just get in there, get it all up together. So, well, I'll tell you what, 12. I'll shake your hand because we are going to kick off very soon and we're going to shoot round to the next section and see Dan and Jake. So uh, I'll leave you to it, boys. Cheers, mate. OK, Jake, in here with the wild boars, yes, middle mate. of uh, section C, C14 peg. How's it feeling? Very, very confident. You know, it, uh, well, to be honest, this is the section we wanted, this or A. You know, Fantastic. B is not renowned to be the flyers, so right. over the moon to be in here. Okay. Feeling very, very confident. OK, you've got the wind pushing in beautifully. I'll see your brother and you've got uh, Billy there. You, the, the gear's being distributed. You've got a lot to do. Yep. You've got How long have you got till the, the We've got goes? a few, few hours, you know, to get fully set up, get clipped up, right. marker and stuff. No bait or anything. OK. So we can get all set up, ready to go. As soon as that horn goes, Right. Okay, and that's when it really starts. That's, that's when it's happening, but it's okay. happening now. Right, crack on, mate. Good cool. luck. Cheers, mate. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the start of the 2012 World Cart Fishing Championships. Yeah, Adam? Not much else to do there, rather than just catch fish. Off with a bang, may the best team win.
We're three and a half hours into this match now. It's 72 hours long, so it's going to be a marathon, not a sprint. Two teams have got off very, very strongly. We're going to look at one of those later on, but right now we're at the back of the Romanian enclave in Section C. Looks like they're fishing pretty similar to us, Dino, but they're off the mark and we're not. What's going on? Well, the only difference is that I can see the baits look the same, the reeds look very, very similar. There's no surprise there, is that we've put a little, little bit more bait out. Whether that's going to come into play in three or four hours' time, maybe when the sun goes down, um, I hope so. Um, mm. But let's face it, there's been an awful lot of disturbance since the kickoff. Um, and that might have pushed the fish out of range. And these guys are fishing at extreme range. And you can see over our shoulder, there's three different countries team managers that are sitting there taking notes of what they're doing. They and are, as soon as yeah. they walk out to swim, they're on the walkie-talkie. So this is a very, very serious game. But as you said, it is a marathon, not a sprint. And I think that the England team plan at the moment is to get a bit of bait out there. And when the fish come in, and we maximise it. Because at the moment, they seem to be picking off a one fish here at the time. Now, I think they've got three or four fish in the sack ready to weigh. But they've had to put quite That's a few right. smaller ones back. Yep. Because there is a 1.5 kilo limitation. Um, and you know we're fishing slightly bigger baits. I'm going to say that too loud. And hopefully we don't have that issue because you know, like you said, the fatigue element over 72 hours. We don't really want to be putting loads of fish back. Everything we get in the net, we want to go on them scales. Definitely. Okay. Well, the other team doing very well. Obviously, Romanian home nation were hotly tipped. The other ones, obviously, the ever danger South Africans. Uh, they are off the mark very, very quickly to a bit of a flyer in B section, and we're going to shoot over there next. four-time defending champion South Africa. Adam, <laughs> how do they keep doing it? It is remarkable, really. Yes. I mean, they're fishing very, very tidily, aren't they? As yeah. you'd expect from, from such established champions. They've got a lovely peg. Um, other than that, what are they doing different from us? It's, it's hard to see any differences. They've obviously got very long rods, 14 footers, I reckon. They and they're do, getting right? out a very long way on their casting. But the other interesting thing, Dino, is that they're fishing two different marks. They've got an inside line going at the same time as the long line, which we were talking about just now. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing. We've not seen many people doing that, have we? No. Well, you're restricted to whip as well, aren't you? So yeah. you've only got length. But yeah. uh, I'll tell you what, angling's not the only thing that they're good at. Fishing's one of them. Boys, take it away. That's entertainment. Class. <laughs> Class. They deserve it for that, don't they? <laughs> Brilliant. OK, I'm back with the Wild Boar Brothers. Dan, it's getting towards the end of the first day. The sun's just dropping away. What's been going on? I can see you've got a couple of sack cords, so something's happened. Yeah, we started off spawning loads of bait, trying because everyone's fishing spreaded boilies, so we're going to try and fish tight. Uh, so if the fish do come over, so we can get multiple bites and we know what, what's going on with our bait as opposed to just fluking single bites, but that's the way it seems to have gone. Well, I can tell you, absolutely. From, from what we've been walking around, obviously having a bit of a look at the other teams and doing some interviews, and yeah, they're fishing a lot wider, and, and obviously yeah. that is a key strength. You, you guys in the team are all proper good anglers at fishing accurate and tight at range, so you're focusing on your strengths? Yeah, well, we've, we've kept the bait. We've put about 30 kilos on an area, a tight area. Okay. And because all the fish seems to be coming at range at the minute, we're just fishing single look baits as far as we can cast them. Okay. And just throwing, sticking randomly like everyone else. While, while it's fishing a bit slow, just trying to compete with what they're doing. Hopefully the fish move on the bait. We can do what we do best then and fish over bait and try and crack as many as we can. Okay. Right, well, one of, one of the things I notice is, is that you're fishing just a boilie approach at the moment, as is pretty much everyone. Is, is that to size out the fish? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got one in there, probably not even a weigher. They're, they're so small, they're sort of like that, but their mouths are really big. Right, so okay. Even, I've caught a, probably a one pound fish, if that, um, on a 20 mil up bait, tipped with a bit of corn. So it's the big up and a size four up. Right, okay. So right. We're not, we're not going no lightly, business. it's not like 10 mil pop. Absolutely, okay. But yeah, it's, uh, they're fishing more, well, smaller hooks and yeah. smaller baits than us. I think they're just wading through the small ones, but. They are, you're dead right. There's been a lot that have been non wires yeah. you know, and, and fish look coming off during the fight, which are, are small fish. So, yeah. well, you're obviously you're gonna stick with your guns, stick with what you're doing. It's gonna pay off the fish. Are, well, the fish were here earlier. I think they've just, to be fair, they've moved off you a bit. Yeah. So. Um, keep doing what you're doing, I'm sure it'll come good. We're going to come back and see you in the morning. Okay. We'll let you get on with your baiting. Thanks for talking to us and good no luck. Worries. Cheers. 
Well, we're over with Kev and Mark in peg A1, and Kev, it's been a slow start, but you've just told me that some of the locals actually say that that's quite often the case in this peg, and it comes good in the end. Yeah, that's, that's what we've been told. Apparently, it's always renowned for a slow start and swim, and it just gets better and better as the match goes on. We're a bit disappointed not to have nicked a fish or two to start with, but you know, with all the commotion of everyone casting in, generally the fish tend to back off and disappear. We saw a few fish show before the match, and they've all gone now, disappeared. The only fish we're seeing are mega long range, like well out of casting range, yeah. but they're there. So as soon as they start drifting in closer, hopefully we'll start catching them. And at some, I mean, the wind's off your back at the moment, which is aging your casting. Mm. At some stage, you're expecting this wind to hit you in the face, and that would be very, very fishy. Yeah, the wind tends to switch around quite a lot here, yeah. and it normally goes one way and then switches around and comes straight towards us. So hopefully when the wind starts pushing into this bank, might be, might not be till tomorrow morning, but hopefully that'll push a lot more fish down into our way and hopefully we'll have some buzzers screaming off. And like the other two English teams, you've put a fair bit of bait out initially. Yeah, we've, we've uh, at the moment, we've gone for two spots. We've gone short down to the left, being right. on an MPEG. I say short, but it's about 70 yards. And, that that looks um, short in a it, more it does, size though, doesn't it? It certainly <laughs> does. And then we're baiting from about 100 to 110 yards on the other rods. Um, we've not got rods on them at the moment. We're fishing all hook baits long, trying to nick a fish. But we've put about 35 kilos out so far of bait, and we'll go on it's it a when we. Bait, isn't it? But again, it it's is. not. It's, it's a drop in the ocean in what over a thousand acres. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to win, to, to be competitive, we need to be catching 200 kilos of fish. So if you think it of it that way, 40 kilos is absolutely nothing. Right. So we need to get the bait in, and when we feel like the fish are coming in, then we'll get the rods on the bait. But for now, we're just blasting long off the back of it and trying to nick a bite. Well, with most sunny, bright, hot days, it's slow during the day. Dusk and dawn are always the best bite times. It's dusk now. I wish you the very best of luck. You've got, well, you're here all night. So, I mean, I'm going to go back and grab a bite to eat. I don't feel sorry for you because I'd, <laughs> I'd love to be here. But, mate, good luck. It's going to be hard, but yeah. do your country proud, mate. Cheers, mate. See you later. OK, it's the end of the first day, really half a day's fishing only, still an awful lot to fish for and play for. I've got the key guys here, the guys that are making the decisions, the guys that count really, that are making things happen out there. What are your feelings now, Pete? At this moment in time, what we've actually got at the moment is that the lads got all the kit together, they found their feet, they started the baiting programme, and we're just going to proceed with that, and with a bit of luck. Torchwood. Everyone needs yeah, luck in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Absolutely, mate. No, so important. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So important. In any event. Yeah. And basically, oh, they're just getting the focus now. Like I said, they're just finding the way forward. And but you know, I'm hoping that tonight, or should I say, we're hoping tonight. That's okay. Gonna, it's gonna. It's gonna. All right. Good. Well, obviously, it, things have kicked off, not in a big way. I mean, the Romanians have said, with their experience of the venue, they've never known it to fish so slowly. The Romanians are one of the teams that's kicked off with a few fish, as are the South Africans, yeah. as probably we should have expected. You know, how is that affecting the mentality of the team now that there are a few people on the score sheet and, you know, it, it, it all matters now, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's, it's a little off-putting when you've not been in that position before, but the amount that they are ahead at this point in time is, is negligible, really. Um, what, what you've got to consider that these guys, when the, when the fish do arrive, they can catch that amount of fish in half an hour. Right, so, okay. I'm not talking great margins, but like you said, it's a, it's a little off putting naturally to be in that position. Absolutely. So, as far as you guys are concerned and the team, it's about sticking with the game plan, not being deterred or, or disorientated or, or influenced by other people. Sticking with it, is, am I right in saying that, Ian? Yeah, definitely. The, this match won't be won on what, what the fish are being caught on at present, just casting a single into oblivion. Right. This match will be won with a lot of fish over a lot of bait, and it's no point just trying to you know, scratch a few fish out at this stage. It'll be won with hundreds and hundreds of kilos, not 10 or 20 kilos. OK. So in, 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 to reflect that, Pete, have you got all of the guys putting in bait, ready yes. for, for the attack, the bombardment? Yes. They have carried on. They've not stopped. OK. But at the same time, trying to nick fish? Yes. Right, OK. And unfortunately, it's not because obviously they don't know the ranges properly. That's not, that's not really happened for them at this moment in time. They, they have managed to scratch a few fish out, yep. but obviously it's not as many as what the locals have caught because they, right. they, they know the ranges, they know what these fish are gonna do in these tournaments. So yeah. at the end of the day, our lads have, you know, again, they've turned up, we've given them as much information as what we can do, mm. as far as what we've got, information we've got. Um, so at the end of the day, it's just a case of sticking with the game plan and sooner or later, then, then fish will come on the bait. And we feel as though we've got the right players in the right areas to make, to make it all happen. 
Okay. Well, one thing I can say from a completely uh, objective point of view, I, as I like to try and have, you know, walking around and looking at the other guys fishing and the other teams and what they're doing, our guys are fishing at a very, very high level. You know, there, there is a lot of um, single baits being slung out, you know, and there's a lot of random, um, almost hit and miss style fishing, not going to yes. name any countries or anything. Our guys are obviously fishing with a game plan in mind, very, very tidy, very accurate, as we'd expect from them under your guys' guidance. So it really is all to play for, and going into the first night, you should cut this atmosphere with a knife. over in B7 with Kia and Jack and Kia for an international debut I've got to say you two have really got into a rhythm and seem very very calm from the off. Yeah 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 we've um we've stuck to the game plan really kept sticking yeah. kept going set our timers every 20 minutes really and recast yeah you know just keep the keep the scent going in the water seem to like the fishy smell so yeah, well, I mean, we're not 24 hours in yet, but you've, you've had a little bit of a flirt with a few different methods, haven't you? You've put a few little yeah. bright baits out and stuff. Yeah, we've tried it. We've, we, you know, we've dabbled with sort of zigs and uh, bright baits, smaller baits. But to be honest, uh, nothing's like really paid off quite yet. No, well, you, you had a lot of bites yesterday. You had nine yeah. fish, which was the best any England team did. Um, but you had to put eight back. And I mean, people sitting indoors must think, oh, it's just coming out here. You fish as hard as you can for 72 hours. But psychologically, that's very, very difficult because, you know, nine bites is fantastic. But putting eight fish back is difficult to take. It must be. Oh, it's proper frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was nice to get one on the scales, I must admit, at three o'clock this morning. I was quite happy with that. Just got to get a few more, mate. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. you've been fishing big bait, so hopefully the big ones will come. Oh. That was the timer. Yeah. If you need to get your rod out, get back on, go mate. for it, mate. You go for it. This is where it's happening. We're in the wild boars section now, and Dan's just going down to the edge of the water to net a fish for Jake. Now, this is the second fish in quick succession they've caught in the last few minutes, and it really started to happen during the night, and that was largely down to a, a small tactical change they've made. They caught through the night, and now they're catching again. So I'm gonna grab 45 seconds with Jake, if I can, in amongst this mayhem, and see if we can find out the changes that they've made to get these fish coming to the bank. As you can see in the wild boar swim here, it's an absolute hive of activity. It's really going on. But one thing we want to get across to you guys at home watching this, that matches of this duration are real, real intense occasions, you know. It's non-stop. You need energy and you need endurance. These guys are obviously supporting each other. They're doing things for each other. It's non-stop. They'll grab a drink when they can, but generally they're on it, reacting to the slightest bleep. They're baiting up all the time. They're doing rods, rigs. It's non-stop. So, Jake, things have started to happen around here, which is... Obviously, a it's massive exactly big up to you guys. It started yeah. to. What, is it something that you have caused that to happen? Have you started um, the bites to come? Yeah, we've kind of um, basically, obviously, the um, Romanians have run away straight away, yeah. catching loads, and uh, we've got our managers and the reserves watching them, seeing exactly what they're doing. So all they're doing is putting out bait with a throwing stick. But to start with, because of all the pressure they put their rigs past the bait. Okay. So when the fish do move in, they're getting their bites quicker than opposed to fishing amongst the bait. But then we're not just fishing singles past it, we're ringing the changes by pulling it back a little bit, you know, getting it in the bait and then getting it further. And what about hook bait choice? Any adjustments there? Um, using paste. Right, we okay. did have little two bait stringers. But with a crossman like this, it's just a waste of time. Yeah, you've really got it pumping in here. And, and yeah. the guys are fishing out a long, long way. They're properly, you know, this is it, you know, one bite, another fish, this is what it's all about now. It's keeping those points coming onto the leaderboard. You've got a team next to you, Bulgaria, they're yep. doing very, very well. Very well. Um, your fish mostly came through the night, is that correct? They did, yeah. We, um, we rotated it so not one, like, both of us didn't sleep at the same time. So okay. I got three hours first. Yeah. So the bait's constantly going in 
and then straight after Dan got three hours because obviously with heat like this and doing this all day and night you need some sleep so absolutely okay. kind of regroup ourselves so it's it's a tactical change pace wraps yeah. you're getting out there at yeah. distance and you're, you're keeping that bait drip feeding through all the time yeah okay hard work a lot of effort but that's what's needed at this level if you build it they will come well, we're over in Peg B7. There's been a significant change in the England team strategy. Kira and Jack have just been brought out. Jamie and Bill have just been taken in. The reasons why, we don't know at the moment. Emotions are running very, very high, but what we've seen is fantastic. The two guys that were already in there fished right the way up until the end, kept baiting and sticking baits all the way out until the other guys got their rods in. I think they should be very, very proud of the effort they've put in. And over the next couple of days, they're going to play a strategic, important part in the next part of the match because they'll be running up and down the bank and giving a lot of information to to the rest of the team. The emotions are running very, very high at the moment, so we'll catch up with the guys a little bit later on, but fingers crossed, the change is gonna pay off. Just seen a strategic change over in zone B, but Adam, we've just come around to see how the boys are doing in zone A, and there's a bundle of sacks in the wall, which is, bodes very, very well for Team England. Absolutely fantastic, as you can see, guys. It's, it's really going on behind us. They're, they're weighing in a succession of weighing fish. You know, we've got this thing where we've got you've got to be over a kilo and a half. So we've got a load of fish here, or Kevin uh, and Barty have got a load of fish which are well over that. So we're getting those weighed in now. I mean, at the start of today. Everyone was just a little bit despondent, you know. It was it was about f fighting the fight and keeping things going. We were what 14th this morning. It was 14th this morning. I've got to say, you know, the Wild Boar twins, one, well, the Wild Boar brothers. They, they, they look they, they look, look like so twins, similar, yeah. don't they? They're down there. They've started to catch. Although you know, they've got a couple of teams around them that are very very competitive. But these boys knew that this swim was going to be slow to start off with. And I think actually in the last 48 hours, this swim could get very very productive. I mean, it looks like it already is now. I mean, they, I think they've had like eight in the last hour or Absolutely. something, which is phenomenal fishing. But they've yeah. had to put a few fish back as well so they're getting plenty of bites which I think is key at the moment definitely and you know this is one of the sections which was top to tip to win the, the event and they're in a flying peg the end peg they were fishing in front before the event kicked off Dino yesterday and one thing that's key here we can see is range the I, further you get the more bites I don't think get. range covers it we've just watched Mark slam a couple of leads out there and I mean I'm no good at judging things but I mean they've got to be pushing the 200 meter mark I, I, really. I'm convinced I just I just saw saw a rig go out 200 yards it must be close to that Dino it's yeah. phenomenal it's nearly as far as you can cast it. <laughs> almost yeah <laughs> underarm but it's significant and I think it's made a big big change so uh, I mean, we'll, we'll keep that under wraps so we don't want absolutely. anyone to know about that well, but one of the key things with this is is there's a lot of clandestine things going on there's a lot of people from other teams coming in as soon as you start catching you've got people you've got an audience and we've seen that in some of the other areas Dino you know where the Romanians have got a permanent permanent audience from all different nations lined up behind them yeah it's not very sporting really but in these events that goes with the territory. Yeah, I think these boys are experienced enough to expect that later on, especially if the word gets out that they're catching, but they made some significant changes to turn their fortunes around earlier on this morning. I think what we should do next is take a quick look at them. Absolutely. As we just saw, a succession of fish being weighed in here for Kevin Barty. It's really started to come together for you this morning. Was this down to a tactical change? Did you make an adjustment? Yeah, it was, we had a very quiet night. We worked hard. We rechucked regularly all through the night and it really didn't pay off. I think we come into this morning with five fish on the scoreboard. Um, wasn't enough. We thought we'll try something different. We went back to the good old English solid bag. Little solid bit of, bags, yeah, right. Okay. Li little bright hook bait inside yeah. a solid bag. And we just, to start off with, we just said, let's give it a go on one rod. We've launched it out and put it down and it's, it's ripped within four minutes and we had a weigher on the bank, about okay. three kilos. So, right. um, yeah, Instant result then? Yeah, so we switched three over to solid bags yep. and then we had a triple take. So Fantastic. we just kept going from there. Okay, well, Barty, I mean, you, you know as well as anyone that successful match fishing, successful carp angling is all about ringing the changes and being prepared to try something different and that's really paid off here then? Yeah, we had them ready to go um, from the start uh, just as a get out of jail card really and we've, we've played that hand this morning and caught a few and to be fair we have started catching a few smaller ones now as well so we've switched uh, to another tactic just okay. to uh, try and bring back the uh, better sized fish really. So what, what have you switched to? Are you willing to tell us now? Just a uh, just a boily hook bait wrapped in some uh, paste. What's the Quite thinking behind flavored. that? Because the bags have got you some bites and now you, you've gone back to the boily approach so what's the thinking there? Yeah well in the bags we've obviously got quite small pellets and 
a small fish can eat small pellets. Okay. So, so you, you now you know the fish are there. They're willing to feed. Now you're trying to pick out the better weighing fish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Distance is that playing a factor, Kev? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, all We're of, seeing that all around, uh, incidentally. All, all of our fish are coming at 160 yards plus. Um, Bart's the man for okay. the long chuck. So, I've heard about this, yeah. Yeah, so he's doing all the casting and I'm doing all the prep work around the swim, getting everything ready. Making the bags the rod, ready. Getting all the bags tied up and he's doing all the casting. Okay, so he's like a, a machine. You just press the on button, is. point him in the direction and he's just going to smash That's it out it. to oblivion. Straight to the horizon. Fantastic, we've seen that. Guys, really grateful for you giving us a bit of time. I know it's all about time. The clock is ticking constantly. So crack on and good luck. Yeah, Thanks. okay, cheers. Well, we was just about to leave the swim and look what's happened. Just over my right hand shoulder, the boys are away again and that rod's only been out a couple of seconds and it's very, very difficult time of the day. That's exactly what they need. They need to just keep putting fish in the net and keep adding to their weight. Here in section C, peg number 13, immediately next door to the Wild Ball Brothers. And this team are making our guys' lives hell at the moment. They're catching a lot of fish, made a big impact at the start of this match, and are really stepping onto the world stage in a big way. Some of you might not have expected this. The team is Bulgaria, and I'm with Mate, who's representing the team. Mate, did you expect this? You're doing really well at the moment. I mean, not really, you know. We expected to catch some fish, but not as many as at the moment. And we hope that uh, we finish section C strong. Okay. Well, you, you've got a lot of experience on the world stage. You fished three world championship yes. events yourself. One of those was at Oxford, Linear Fisheries. Mm -hmm. uh, and you did quite well there, didn't you? Yes, we had some info from uh, people um, from Bulgaria that lived in London that fished the lakes. And they told us some info. Um, and uh, pretty much we did what they they, they told us, you know, the info that they told us as well, and we had the chance to catch some fish from one of the hardest lakes over there. Fantastic. And we finished fourth, which was a good fourth, position for the lake. Very good. Only six result. or seven teams caught fish on this lake, okay. as I remember. And you had two? We had two, yeah. Excellent. So, information and preparation. Exactly. And how much of those two factors played their part in your event here? I mean, most of it, but I would add luck as well. Sometimes, right. very modest. <laughs> with luck, nothing happens easy. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of preparation, obviously, we don't want to pry too much into what you guys are doing because you're having a great result at the moment. So there's lots of things I would like to ask, but obviously I won't. But, you know, can you tell us anything about your bait? I mean, our bait, uh, there were three tournaments before the World Championship in which uh, some of the Bulgarian teams competed. And um, out of these three tournaments, we select chose a bait that uh, works the best and now we're using this bait which um, give us our, some results at the moment okay and we're doing pretty good Absolutely. we hope to keep it up and finish strong okay so so even if you perhaps haven't had the time or the resources to come and fish here yourself now i know you're you're a farmer you've got your own business and you're a self-sponsored self-funded team you know you're very passionate guys yes coming here and practicing won't, may not be uh, viable may not be economical to do, but you've still managed to get some, some knowledge and some resource from previous match, and you've tailored a bait using that information to fish at this lake in this match, which I think is fascinating. Yes. Very, very good. Yes, I mean, uh, everybody wants to compete in a world championship. You know, it doesn't matter how, how we get uh, the money and uh, the sponsorship from companies and stuff. You know, if they don't help us, we try everything to compete in it and we're here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're not only here, you're currently in second place. Yeah. You have a very, very real chance of taking this event all the way to the wire. So wishing you lots of luck with that. It's been great talking to you, Mate. Thanks so much. Coming up next, another one of the big hitting nations. Coming into this championships, there were a few teams that we were looking out for. South Africa were obviously one of them winning the championships four times on the bounce. Casper's give us a couple of minutes to have a quick chat with us. Um, Casper, over the last 24 hours, you've developed quite a bit of attention behind your swim, haven't you? No, for sure. As I said to you earlier, there's a lot of people there that uh, 
really wants to inf emphasize and focus on the rules. And when the rules is there, you need to follow the rules. And some of these guys, they just take it a step further. Yeah. And they really enforce it. So you have to live with it. Well, as you said to me, the tallest trees always catch the most wind. I did try to get that one in a couple of days ago, but it didn't work it in. Um, how do you think your start's been? I mean, you've got an awful long way to go, a couple of days nearly. I mean, we're just over, you know, just over the first third. Um, quite pleased with your peg, quite pleased with the way you're fishing so far? Yeah, I'll be very pleased with the peg, but I think at this stage, the, the, the biggest concern we've got is, is it's not really producing. Yeah. And we have been feeding it and topping it up and topping it up, but it's really not producing. And I hope that it will definitely turn on the second or the third portion of, of, of the tournament, because at this stage, it's really just a little bit of a slow tempo we haven't just started getting it to where it should be. Yeah, do you expect your swim to build over the course of the, that, course that, of the match? That is how this whole tournament actually gears up. It's, yeah. You'll start slowly off and then it's getting momentum and on the end of the day, then it's really, it's, it's getting hectic. So yeah. we, we really pray for that now because well, it's not happening yet. No, exactly. And if it doesn't stay, if it does stay slow, do you have a plan B and a plan C to go to or have you got one plan A and that's how you're going to attack the entire match? Yeah, what we've done is, is, is we started off with a lot of feeding on, on the boily side. Yes. You've got your solubles and you've got your, your solids and we've been building it up and building it up and now we're really starting getting to a stage that it's close to panic stage, but we have to get the feed in the water and we have to draw the fish so we, we need to make a plan so the only thing we can do is, is the more we feed we hope they come exactly well i'll let you i'll let you carry on with it mate it's been a fantastic talking to you hopefully if you catch a few more fish we'll come back and visit you but uh, for now good luck thanks sir we're coming to the end of the first full day in four hours time we'll be exactly halfway through this marathon match Dino and I have departed the venue. The rules state that everybody has to be away and, uh, from seven o'clock as soon as it starts to get dark. So Dino, we're back at the hotel. Yes, we are. We'd like to be supporting the lads. As it is, we've had a scrub up, we've got a cold beer, uh, but what's happened? What well, are the scores on the doors? I've got the live feed here, which is really handy at the moment. There's one continuous factor in this competition is that the home team favourites, the Romanians, have been first place pretty much from the off. So there's no surprise there. Actually, the next two places, bronze and silver medal, they keep chopping and changing. So what's going to happen come the end of the match it's anybody's guess but at the moment Bulgaria in second Portugal in the bronze medal position but South Africa another one of the big big favorites have just fallen out into fourth place so right. that's a bit of a surprise mm, that's a big big surprise I mean yeah. they're the the big hit in one Romania home favorites I mean they were always going to be up there but they're being very convincing at the moment, aren't they? They're, they are. they're setting quite a pace. Well, they're leading t two of the sectors and they're second in the other. So, I mean, they are very, very dominant at the moment. Mm. And, and you'd have to say, it just looks like their swims are gonna build and build. And we thought that it might be a thousand kilos um, to win this match. Yeah. And, and we also thought that in the conditions, with it being really red hot and stuff like that, it might be a bit of a push, but- It's looking possible if though, If you had the it? stage that they're at at the moment, not halfway through, they're over 500 kilos already. So if there's, and they did get off to a slow start. The first 24 hours was mm. abysmal for them. And that came from the horse's mouth. So yeah, that, that looks good for One thing you haven't mentioned, I don't want you to sugarcoat it. What's England doing? Where are we? Well, England are outside the top 10 at the moment, but I've got to say this, it doesn't look good at the moment, but if I had to put six anglers against the rest of the world, it's the six anglers that are out there fishing right now. They can definitely do it, they just need a fish to get on. Do you know what? There is no one I've ever seen, pair or individual, that I would put in there in front of any of those lads. They're doing themselves proud, they're fishing it incredibly well, they're, aren't they? They're immaculate, their preparation's been fantastic. The way they're actually angling is tenfold, not, you know, I don't say slightly, tenfold better than anyone else I've seen here. They mm. really are professional. They just haven't had the fish in front of them. Mm, okay, well, um, as I said, you know, we're almost halfway through this match. Um, we wish we could do something to, to lift them directly, but as it is, I we think there's just one thing left to do, mate. Support the team. Come on, England!